Hello and welcome to this week's Facebook Live. How are you? If you're watching the replay, thank you very much for watching the replay. And if you're joining us live, it's wonderful to have you. My name's Craig and I'm from mansioningles.com. And with me again, I'm happy to say, is my good friend Lynn from Put It Like This. How are you, Lynn? Hi, Craig. I'm fine. I'm a little bit husky today, so <laughs> I hope everybody can understand me. <laughs> Have you been shouting at anyone? Is that why no, your voice is strange? I think No, I don't shout at people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very nice to my students. No, I think it's the air conditioning, I think. So um, I'm a little bit husky, but it's okay. Yeah, you haven't <laughs> been shouting to your online students. Lynn, Lynn's no. <laughs> website, put it like this. Lynn is um, a, a personal teacher, so if you would like to have classes with Lynn, then we'll give you more details at the end of this Facebook Live. Um, and if you'd like to listen to a podcast, uh, we have a podcast called Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. It's aimed at Spanish speakers, and you're welcome to go and listen completely free over at inglespodcast.com. Lynn, what are we speaking about today? Oh, we're speaking about a lovely topic today. It's, it's called gadgets. And I'm sure that lots of people won't know the vocabulary for half of this lesson. So I think it's going to be new vocabulary for lots of people. Well, we're actually, <laughs> get, so anyway. let's start with vocabulary because yeah. gadget, device and appliance are three nouns that could be confused. Uh, is there any difference between them? Yes, there is. There is. So... I mean, you often hear, the thing is, there's a big area where they're interchangeable. So you'll hear native speakers using them in many situations, and you think it sounds the same. There is a little difference, though. Um, basically, I'm going to start from the back, from the back there, from appliance, because appliance is usually something that's like electrical, and it's usually for domestic or household use. So, for example, a toaster is an appliance or a sandwich maker is an appliance, yeah, or a mixer or a blender. They would be appliances. And then we've got device. And device is usually used for mechanical things, so things that are not electric, or they're used for techie things. So things now that go with the internet, with the mobile phones, any little sort of add-on things with Bluetooth, they're often called devices, yeah? And then the lovely word, which I love, is gadget. But it's a gadget. bit difficult to pronounce, isn't it? Because it's got that j in the middle. Yeah. Gadget. And um, gadget means a device. It can also mean um, an appliance, right? So it's something that helps you do something more easily. But we often use the word gadget when we don't know the name for the thing. So like appliance, we know, for example, it's a toaster. But sometimes we have things and we don't really know the real name for them. And if we don't know the real name for them, we often call them gadgets. That's one idea. And then there's another idea behind the word gadget. And that is that sometimes if people, if many people think that the device or the appliance is not very useful, then they talk about it as being a gadget. And, they, it, and the idea there is that it's not really necessary. It's a little bit gimmicky. It's a bit, it's a bit over the top. Yeah. Also, maybe older people like our parents who are not used to technology yeah. might talk about gadgets in an annoying way like oh this stupid gadget gadgets. never works and what's the i don't understand this stupid gadget so it's often used in a negative way to describe exactly. some complicated piece of of, of technology uh -huh. just want to say a quick hello to people we're being joined lynn by people from all over the world oh, hammer's, yeah, hammer's here from madrid uh -huh. hi hammer hi <laughs> olivia is with us claudia hello welcome and Koke from I don't know where Cook is from. Are you based in Spain, Cook, or abroad? Katia from Costa Rica. Beautiful, Hi. beautiful Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. And Celeste is with us. Rafael from Honduras. Mm -hmm. And Sindo from Alicante. And Myrta just joined from Argentina. And yeah. Eric has just joined. 
From? Um, from, we don't know. <laughs> but uh, it's wonderful to have you all with us. And again, if you're oh, watching lovely. the replay, thank you for uh, yeah. thank you for spending your time with us. So yeah, Lynn's just explained the difference between these these words. And what we'd like to do is to show you some gadgets that we have at home and do a negative positive. So the first gadgets we're going to talk about are ones that are really useful and then ones that are maybe a little bit disappointing. But let's look at some vocabulary first because I just said a gadget, a device, an appliance can be useful. So that's one adjective we can use to describe something. Do you know the opposite of useful? What's the negative? What's the opposite to useful? If a gadget or a device has no use, what do we say? Any idea? Put it in the chat box if you know. What's the opposite of useful? Oh, this device is really, really useful. But unfortunately, this one is doesn't work. It's... Do we have any answers, Lynn? At the moment, I'm just seeing that we're getting more people from Guatemala and from wow. Nicaragua, <laughs> from Huelva in Spain, but nobody's put the answer up yet. Or maybe. Oh, well, we'll that. tell you. The opposite of useful is useless. useless. So that's the negative yeah. adjective. Lynn, what other vocabulary can we use to describe gadgets, devices, appliances? Uh huh. Well, we often, when something is really useful, we have another word for it and we say it's really handy. Handy, like the word hand, yeah. So you say it's handy, yeah. You you uh, speak German, don't you? That's isn't that German yeah. for mobile phone? That's right. In Germany, they say handy is a mobile phone, but not in Britain. Yeah, in Britain, <laughs> handy just means that it's like useful. It's very very useful. Uh -huh. And mobile phones are handy. They're very handy. Yeah, they are. They are very handy. Uh -huh. Another one that's a bit more formal, you could say, is labor saving. Labor saving. And that means that it saves you a lot of work. And obviously, a lot of devices and appliances are labor saving. My biggest labor saving uh, appliance is my washing machine, obviously. I think everybody's <laughs> washing machine is a labor saving device. If you've ever tried to wash everything by hand, which is not very nice. <laughs> you know, we've had so many appliances break this year. It's just been uh -huh. a year of bad luck with appliances our washing machine broke in, oh, at the no. beginning of the year today our dishwasher broke mm -hmm. we have a small dishwasher that that's broken we had the part of the oven break so we've had four or five different appliances break this year it's been really, really bad luck but that's often because you bought them all at the same time <laughs> and then what did they call that they call that programmed obsolescence when everything is programmed to fail and so you always have like a really expensive year often i heard that is that a theory or is that fact that now they build devices and appliances that break think, after so many years i think so for, you some, buy for some things it was definitely a fact but obviously manufacturers don't want to admit it um but i think i think it was it was proven i think for printers i don't know if you've had that problem with printers that your printer from your computer doesn't last very long well, actually, I, I don't I don't know if that's true because I think they make the money from the ink from the printer. Mm -hmm. It's but a bit a like of, razor blades. It's yeah. not the actual sh razor that's expensive. The blades are really expensive that you need, and the ink for the printer is no. where the, the money is. That, that's true, but I've had three printers, and they've all broken down. That, and, and somebody it says on the internet, I don't know if we can believe it, but it says on the internet when I was looking for fixes for them, uh -huh. that after a certain number of pages, they start to have faults in really? their device. So you get computer faults. And that is really programmed obsolescence because it's been programmed to fail after okay. a certain time. Yeah. Before we continue with some more vocabulary, mm -hmm. one thing I'd like to say is that towards the end, we're going to give you a link to join us live on Facebook if you want to. So we'll ask you some questions at the end about gadgets, your gadgets, your devices, and we'd love you to, to come in with us and, and speak with us and practice your English. It's a great opportunity to practice a little and say hello. So we'll give you more information about that later. What else do we have? So we've had 
labor saving, handy, useless, and useful. Um, up to date is, I think, self explanatory. With technology, it's constantly changing. And the mobile phone you bought four or five years ago is now old. If you buy one today, it's a new model. We say it's up to date. Okay. It's and the opposite. New. The opposite there is it's a similar word, but we say out of date. So your old mobile phone is out of date and yeah. your new one is up to date. Uh -huh. Things go out of date very quickly these days. They do. They do. Uh -huh. Okay. Another word. Let's try this one. User friendly. What's that, Lynn? Mm -hmm. That means that it's really easy. You are the user, right? So if something isn't very complicated and you don't need big instruction manuals, then it's very user friendly because it's friendly towards the user. Yeah, I like that one. Uh -huh. And we usually say things are user friendly or not very user friendly. Mm -hmm. There's a comment here from uh, Moni, who said after mm -hmm. three or five years, appliances and devices are not working. I would use present simple with that more. I would say don't work. Mm -hmm. Okay, because if they're not working, maybe they're not working now, but you're speaking about something that's usually true. So it's a fact that isn't necessarily mm -hmm. at the moment. So I'd use present, present simple. Yeah. So devices, yeah, yeah they they don't work or they stop working, you could say as well. Mm -hmm. They stop working. Mm -hmm. That's um, okay, go back um, to... One more. Do you know the word? Yeah. <laughs> Versatile. I'll let you do that one. <laughs> <laughs> versatile is something um, that I am definitely not. If a person is versatile, they can do many different things. Like they're really good at cooking. They can take fantastic photographs. They're really good drivers. They can sing. So if you're versatile, you can do many different things. And if a gadget or a device or an appliance is versatile, it's exactly the same. It can do many different jobs for you. So, for example, a mobile phone is a versatile mm -hmm. device because mm -hmm. it's a calculator, it's a camera, you can connect to the internet. It does many, many things. So it's a really versatile device. Mm -hmm. I like that word. It's nice. Yeah. I thought of, actually, while you were speaking, Craig, I know we didn't plan it, but I thought of two very informal words because the words that we've got there are correct words they're, they're used you can write them you could write them in an essay if you're writing an essay but in colloquial english when we speak about gadgets and devices i thought today just before we came on that i talk about two things i say this thing this this gadget this device is a godsend do you know that oh, word? God, a godsend, a godsend. Yes. yes. And we mean that it's been sent from heaven and it's just wonderful and I can't do without it. It's called a godsend. Is that, do you use that word? I might say lifesaver. Lifesaver, there's another one. Yeah. A, life, a life-saving device. Yeah. Uh -huh. in, in the summer, and we'll speak about this a bit later, a fan, mm. ventilador, <laughs> a fan is a life-saving device if you live in Valencia in August. Yeah. So mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, yeah. Although sometimes we can't think of names for gadgets or devices. And there are some words that are quite funny that we can use to describe something that we don't know <laughs> the name of. Uh -huh. For example, how would you pronounce this, Lynn? <laughs> a thingy magic. A thingy magic. Now, even though it's got that ah, singer magic, I actually say singer me jig. I don't know about you, Craig, but it's I'm something that I sure. have never seen written. I've never seen that word written before in mm -hmm. my life. I think it exists in the dictionary because we found it. Um, a singer me jig. And uh, I love that. <laughs> That's can very you, colloquial. Can you pass me the, the thingamajig over there? The thingamajig, the thingamajig. And sometimes for short, you can just say that thingy over there, that thingy, that thingy, <laughs> thingamajig. Uh -huh. Because you probably know the word thing, which is cosa. So uh -huh. thing, thingy is um, cortito. Cortita. And, th and thingamajig. 
And there's another word which is quite similar. What's its name? Now, if you break this long word up into words that you can identify, you've got what's its name. Three words pushed together. What's its name? Uh, it's kind um, of like a question, but it, they've made it into a noun, haven't they? Yeah. And you can also use this for people. You can say, oh, yesterday I saw, uh, what's, its, what's his name in the street, the neighbor? Mm -hmm. What's his name or what's her name? Mm -hmm. And it kind of sounds like one word when you say it quickly together. Yeah. So what's its name? And an alternative to that one is what's it called? That what's it called? What's it called? Yeah. Uh -huh. And we say it really quickly together as if it's one word. In actual fact, it's a, it's a chunk of language, yeah. So thingamajig. It's quite informal, aren't they? Those, those last three, thingamajig, what's its name? You don't really see those things written, yeah? Right, yeah, oh, yeah. You, you probably, maybe in dialogue, if you're writing dialogue, but usually yeah. they're, it's spoken English, not written English. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So we're going to look at some gadgets and devices now with you. But before we do that, there's a very common expression we use when we're speaking about gadgets and devices. And we're describing what it's used for. So you could say it's a thingamajig <laughs> or, a, or, or a thingy or a thing you use for doing something. Mm -hmm. Be careful of those prepositions because with preposition for, if you use a verb, it would be a gerund, an ing verb. For example, it's a thing you use for cleaning the floor. Mm -hmm. And with the two, it's probably going to be the infinitive of the verb. So it's a thing you use to clean the floor. Mm -hmm. yeah. So shall we jump in and do this, yeah. Lynn? What do you uh -huh. think? Are there, that's, I think that's... So. so we have to explain to everybody what we've done is Craig and me this week, we've been thinking of our top five gadgets that we love. We call these our can't do without or our must-haves yeah these gadgets that we simply can't do without <laughs> and i love thinking of these and then i actually realized that i have lots of gadgets in the house <laughs> <laughs> and not that i know more that are useless <laughs> well i've seen your list lynn and i'm very interested mm -hmm. for you to explain one or two of them that i don't know what they're used what for they <laughs> so hopefully you'll hear us practicing the vocabulary as we're describing these gadgets, and then maybe you can come in with us and describe some gadgets that you use, your favorite ones. So let's begin with gadgets we can't do without, can't live without, and we must have them. Mm -hmm. Shall I start? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so we'll do this alternately. So the first one I have is sitting right in front of me. I'll show it to you. And my air conditioning, that's another thing that broke. I was telling Lynn before we connected oh, really? that I've had so many things that have broken this year. My air conditioning broke on the 10th of August. And I've been without air conditioning for, well, since the 10th of August. Oh, so no, one no. thing I cannot do without is my USB fan uh -huh. that sits in front of my desk. There's another fan there. Maybe you can see. Uh -huh. No, it's there. Maybe you can see it. So I've got one fan behind me. Uh -huh. I've got one fan in my face because it's oh, wow. really, really hot now. And you the traffic's me. noisy, so the windows are closed, the doors are closed, so there's no traffic noise from the streets while we're recording. And obviously I need a fan, otherwise I would mm. die from the heat here. That's going to be a very expensive year for you, isn't it? It's going to be a really expensive year. Yes, <laughs> new and new can new air conditioning. Yeah, we've had nice. it for sixteen years, and wow. um, mm. yeah, a new air conditioning is going to be expensive. So yeah, my first gadget that I can't do without at the moment is a USB fan. And What's why, yours, do, you, why oh. do you like it? Because it's USB. Um. Because, you don't put it into your phone, do you? Well, no, because it, it, I, I plug it. I plug it into the USB uh -huh. port in the computer for power, mm. but then I walk. I, I can take off the cable and I can walk around the flat. Uh -huh. Okay, so it like charges up with it. Uh -huh. It charges up, and then if I'm eating, I'll just put mm -hmm. that on the table, or if I go into the other room, I take it with me. So I've always got this. is This is my biggest fan. <laughs> this is my biggest fan. <laughs> It's not big, 
It's not big, but it's my biggest <laughs> fan. I love it because it keeps me cool and not sweating in you August. Are, and you are a fan of your USD fan. <laughs> I am a big fan of my fan. <laughs> okay, you're up, Lee. Okay. Uh, Lee, right. Lynn, sorry. You're oh, up, Lynn. My must-have, must-have for everything is, and I have two to show you, is my Bluetooth portable speaker. And I have this one, which is a bit ugly, but it's waterproof. So this one goes in the shower. For the shower. Yeah, and I can plug it onto the shower and it doesn't matter if it gets wet, you see. Fantastic. What do, what do you then, listen to in the shower, music or podcasts? All sorts of things. Well, both. Not really podcasts, not podcasts. I listen to podcasts in the car and in the kitchen. And for the kitchen, I have a very smart don't you think that that looks smart it's that's lovely golden. yeah and that's my bluetooth speaker and this one is very powerful so when i'm cooking i'm in the kitchen listening to inglés podcast <laughs> 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 among Thank many you. others yeah and this one sometimes i actually take well i used to take it in the car with me to connect to my mobile phone but now last year i got another car and now i've got a, a, my my radio in my car has got Bluetooth, so so now I don't need that in the car. Yeah. Can I ask you I something about? Things. Can I ask you some? <laughs> can I ask you something about the shower? Yeah. Speaker. Uh -huh. Do you, Do you listen to Wet 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 in the shower with with that one? <laughs> Craig, that's a very bad joke. I'm sure that most of the people who are watching us don't. You have never heard of Wet Wet Wet. <laughs> you're showing your age this is a group everybody that craig obviously is a big fan of <laughs> and everybody then, everybody knows wet wet, 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 wet i'm wet, sure wet. i'm sure hammer remembers wet 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 yeah yeah okay number two for me okay. um mm -hmm. let me have a look what number two for me is oh yes of course i have it here what's ah. this yeah, it's got to be, hasn't it? The mobile phone is a must-have for me because we said at the beginning it does so many different things. It's so versatile, um, and I use it for connected to the Internet, answering email, calculator. There's lots of different apps I use every day, and it's usually with me all the time. And, of course, you can phone people with it. Some people forget that you can actually call people <laughs> with the mobile phone. And uh, I absolutely, I don't think I could easily do without it. So that's number think, two for me, the mobile phone. I think everybody is hooked on the mobile phone. When the mobile phones first came out, I'm so old that I can remember. And when I was at work, I was a big resistor. I didn't want a mobile phone. I didn't want my boss to be able to call me outside work hours. At the beginning, the mobile phones were just for telephoning. And I really resisted. I didn't want a mobile phone at all. But I have to say, I mean, now, especially with smartphones, I think the invention of the smartphone has been the game changer. Does everybody know that word? Game changer. That means something that has changed the whole scene. Yeah. And we had a, a mobile phone originally was just like a normal phone. So it, it wasn't such a big difference. But when we got smartphones and we could connect to the Internet and we could listen to the radio and we could listen to podcasts and do all those other things with the apps, then that was a real game changer. It changed the world, changed the whole way we we live. Yeah. And you could also use game changer as an adjective. You can say it's game changing technology yeah. or it's a game changing device yeah. as well. Yeah. I okay, knew then. we would have lots of words with this program. <laughs> <laughs> this is a huge amount of vocabulary. Okay, so my my second one. I bet do you know what this is? This is my egg pricker. No, this is what I wanted to ask you. Ah. What is an egg pricker? I know what an egg are. is. <laughs> this is my egg pricker. Unfortunately, I didn't bring an egg in, right? But I don't know if you can see. There's a, ooh, you can't really see there. No, you can't see. But here in the middle, there's a hole. And this bit has got a little spring. And you can see you press it down. So you sit the egg on the top. And then you push it down. And then out of this hole comes a little needle. And it puts Ooh, a hole fun. 
through the egg, right? <laughs> and then when you boil your eggs, right, then they don't crack. You know, sometimes oh, when you boil your right. eggs yes. and they crack and then you, the, you've got white and yellow and it's a yeah, right Yes, mess, yes, right? yes, yes. So this is a guarantee that your eggs will never crack. Is that and because also, the pressure is equal inside exactly, to outside? I think so, yeah. And um, and I think that, and also, where if you want to hard boil eggs, so if you're using your eggs for a salad, for example, I always find that this makes them much easier to peel afterwards when you peel your eggs. Now, this thing, I discovered it when I lived in Germany. Everybody in Germany has an egg pricker. And I brought <laughs> this from Germany all the way to Spain because I don't think they sell them here. <laughs> I've never seen that one before. Do you remember the name in German for an egg pricker? Oh, no, no, I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things. It's like, have you got the thingy to prick the egg? No? <laughs> I'm sure that in German, there probably is a word in German for it, but I really don't know. No? It looks, it looks very handy. My grandmother told me that if you put salt in the water, the salt stops the egg breaking oh, while really? you're boiling oh. it so okay. i always put some salt in i don't know if that's true where does it because, work um it it usually uh -huh. sometimes it breaks but usually it doesn't so if you're watching this and you believe there's a scientific reason why salt in the water stops an egg breaking when you boil it i'd like to know if if my grandmother was actually telling me the truth or or maybe joking with me so i don't know <laughs> Okay, your turn. Yeah, um, because of the podcast, one device I bought years ago and I absolutely adore, I absolutely love, is this, which is it's only a small device, but it, again, it's very versatile. It's a portable audio recorder for recording audio. Now, yes, you can record audio with your mobile phone, and these days, smartphones have very good microphones. But this device enables you to put four microphones separately in there. And obviously, you'll get better sound with higher quality microphone. You can adjust the levels. And there's loads of menus in there to make it sound better, bass, different, um, different things you can adjust to make, make it sound really good. And you can also add more attachments on here, other microphones. And I just take it with me when I record in the school, when I record students in the classroom. I use it here when we record the podcast. It's never failed me. It's never let me down. There's that phrasal verb, to let let you down, the seption. It's never let me down. It's very, very reliable. And it's a gadget I absolutely could not do without when How I'm recording audio. How long have you had that? I've had it for so long that it had rubber on the outside and the rubber in with the salt air, because I live near the beach in Valencia, so the salt air has destroyed all of the rubber. And I wow. think it's probably eight years old now, wow. seven, eight years old, and I use it every week. It looks very techy. Yeah. It's easy to use. It's very easy to use. Craig, um, we've caused a bit of confusion, I think. Uh, some people are writing in about the egg pricker because apparently um, on the subtitles, Monica saw egg cracker. But, egg um, cracker? Yeah, but let we didn't me, put egg cracker, did we? Let me check. Maybe she's right. Egg pricker. pricker. Oh, pricker. And then somebody else asked, um, Monica also asked, what does it mean to prick? Well, to prick is when you have a very, very sharp needle and if you prick your finger and a tiny bit of blood comes out in that famous fairy tale. I don't know if you remember the fairy tale. What is the fairy? Sleeping Beauty in the fairy tale of Sleeping Beauty where the princess, she's, I think, what she's doing? She's spinning wool, isn't she? And she pricks mm -hmm finger and then she falls into a sleep for a thousand years or whatever i can't remember everything of that and also of course now in covid uh with 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 covid19 many people are getting tests 
to see if they have any antibodies. And it's been on the television here and you see them. There's a test that they have where they take a, knit, a needle, like the one that's in here, and they just prick the finger and they take one drop of your blood. So to prick something is what you do when you have a very, very sharp point and it pricks your skin. Right. And sometimes when you go to the hospital or the clinic to have a blood test or to mm -hmm. give blood, the nurse might say to you, don't worry, it's just a little prick. It's just a little prick in your skin. Mm -hmm. So here it's used as a, as a noun, but the verb to prick is to pierce, make a hole with a very, very small needle. Mm -hmm. and, and also, also in the sorry. garden, can't you? You can prick your finger on a rose, on a flower that has a thorn, you might prick your finger and hurt yourself. Eva was confused with pelador, which is the verb you use when you were speaking about the egg. Ah, to peel to the peel. egg. Uh -huh. So pelador is a peeler, like a potato peeler, a vegetable peeler, mm -hmm. and the verb is to peel. To peel, yes. Yeah, P-E-E-R. Uh -huh. Joss says that in my country, we actually do not know these devices. The only egg I know is to egg myself <laughs> on. Very good. Like That's that. very good. <laughs> Right. And you better explain to people what egg myself on is because they might not know. That's is it, isn't it to encourage someone? Yeah. Isn't it to anim animar? Like animar. to egg, yeah, to egg, egg someone. Egg Come on, you can do it. Come on, let's go. Egg yourself on. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's a strange word as well. It's a very strange phrasal verb to egg somebody on. Mm -hmm. Okay, my turn now, yeah? Is it? Yes. Next one. Now, I bet you don't know this one either, do you? I know, no, I, I've never seen one, but I, I think oh, I know what it does. I think okay. I know what, what the device does. Are you going to put the word up for everybody? There we go. So a fringe or a bangs cutter. Here. Now, your fringe is this. In British English, we call this, this flejillo, we call it a fringe. And in American English, it's called bangs. Uh -huh, which is a really strange word. I don't know why the Americans call it bang, because bang is normally a loud noise, isn't it? Bang. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And um, I've got children, and when they were little, my girls all had fringes, and their hair used to grow so fast. And I used to cut it myself because I was trying to save money and not take them to the hairdressers just for the fun. <laughs> <laughs> and my daughters hated me because we have pictures of my daughters when they were little and their fringes were always like like <laughs> half up and half down because I could they would never stay straight I would I would say stand still while I'm cutting and they would never stand still and they used to be so frightened that they used to tense their faces so they would go like this. And because they had their, their heads like this, their forehead became shorter. So I would cut the fringe, and then when they relaxed, their fringe was up here. <laughs> <laughs> I'd until, love to see those. I'd love to see those photos. Yeah, until I found this wonderful gadget, right? And this gadget basically is you put it like this, you pull it down, <laughs> it keeps the it keeps the fringe. Sorry, I can't do it because my fringe isn't straight, but you put it down like this, and then you get the scissors. Cut it. And you cut like that, and then you get a straight line. You see? It's come down as a straight line. But I don't cut my fringe, I go to the hairdressers. <laughs> That's a wonderful But if anybody gadget. has children, this is what you need if you don't want to ruin your children's hair. <laughs> I think that's my favorite so far. <laughs> I really, really like that. Right, your turn. What's yours? Oh, this is this is something that most of you have probably got in your kitchens, in your houses, and I'm sure you've seen this before. Do you know what this is called? Mm. How do you say ajo in English? You put the ajo in there, and then you press. So it's actually called... A garlic press and the reason I like this so much is that uh, one thing I don't like when I'm cutting garlic with a knife is afterwards your fingers really smell of garlic and I love garlic but I don't really like to smell it one hour after I've eaten so very simple garlic press it's a fantastic little device and very useful very handy everyone mm. should have a garlic press in their kitchen 
I yeah, think. Yeah, that, that is a good one. I have that one too. Uh -huh. Okay. Next one. I wonder if anybody knows what this is and what this does. You press it like this. Any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> It's called a staple remover, but does anybody know what it does? Do you know what that means? Okay, so on your papers in the corners, I don't know if you can see that, you have these little metal things. That's called a staple, yeah? Like it comes from a stapler, right? And if you want to take it out, you can take it with your fingers, but then you prick your fingers, don't you? And you damage your nails and you prick your fingers. So you have this handy-dandy little gadget which is called a staple remover Oops. Until I get them <laughs> yes. you put it in here and you squeeze and out comes a staple look at that magic <laughs> my nails stay perfect <laughs> when i saw that lid on your list i thought have i got i had a staple remover i have no idea where it is because so much now is digitalized yeah which uh -huh. connects to my final um, must have. Uh -huh. And I can't remember the last time I needed to take a staple out because I don't work with much paper anymore. Do you work with a lot of paper? Do you use I that? Do. Or, yeah. You do. <laughs> I do. I do. I have to say, I'm a bit old fashioned. <laughs> yeah, Sindo said it's Kita Grappas, staple <laughs> remover. Well done. Well done, Sindo. Well done. Uh -huh. Well done. Okay. Well, my my final um, my final device gadgets appliance. It's a big one. I'm, I'm not it's a big one for a gadget. It's, it's, a bit big it's, gadget. it's probably well, it's probably an appliance actually. I would say, and I can't really show it to you because I'm using it now, and it's this computer, the computer that I use to do my work, and I'm probably I, I use it every day for hours every day. I don't know how I'd be able to do my work without it. I would not be talking to you now if I didn't have a desktop computer. And together with the mobile phone, um, it's just made it so much easier to to do teaching, to create materials, to do the podcast, to edit the podcast. Everything is around the com the use of the computer. So that for me is a must-have um, appliance, something I could not do without. Craig, do you usually call it desktop computer? I know that that's the proper word, but I don't think I usually call it a desktop computer. I would say a PC. Would you? Or not? I was going to say PC, but then uh -huh. and if I speak about it in spoken English, I would say PC or my computer. Uh -huh. But so many people have laptop computers. Yes. And I true. wanted to differentiate, to make a difference right. between the mm -hmm. laptop and the desktop. The laptop sits on your lap, it's the portatil, and the desktop is bigger with a, a bigger screen and a separate keyboard. Yeah. And also when I do security copies, because you must you must have at least one copy of all of your photos and your data, please mm. remember that. So when I make copies, then I have to specify desktop computer when mm. I do the copy so that I know it's copying information from this computer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've just seen from the from the chats or from the comments, Craig. Somebody, Alejandra, wants us to pronounce stapler, stapler, and staple. Yeah. Now it's a little bit. It sounds a bit strange because between the P and the L, we have that schwa sound. We we kind of put another vowel in there. Stapler, stapler, stapler. pull, uh -huh. stapler and staple uh -huh. all the words that end in l e are often pronounced oh for example bottle yeah so that l e we pronounce it if you were to write it you would probably write it e l but english spelling is very is very difficult so the l e staple it's e l okay yeah and the vowel sound you need for that a is is a uh, the same as in words like stay or way or day. So it's staple, stapler. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. Okay, right, my last one. Now, I feel very bad now because you've got really, really useful devices like your desktop <laughs> computer that are essential for your life. 
And I'm obviously the house. <laughs> I have no idea what this is. I have no idea what this does. What this it's is because I, I was going for like smaller things because I was thinking gadgets. I wasn't really thinking of like big appliances, right? So yeah. this is. I wonder if anybody knows what this is. Shall I put the word up? It makes a noise. You can hear the noise first. Hmm. Can you? <laughs> Anybody know? Shall I show them? I think so. Uh -huh. I think it's like going to be different. Right. This is an electric lint remover. What is now, lint? What is lint? So on your cloth, on your material, on your clothes, sometimes, especially if the clothing is synthetic or if it's um, wool, sometimes the more you wash it, you get little tiny balls of lint, right? Now, this is where the material, the fabric, forms itself into a little ball. Often on, on wool jerseys, yeah, or, or pullovers, you get little balls. And then, of course, it spoils it because it looks old and it's not very nice, you see. Or if you have flannelette sheets for the bed, and they get full of all of those little balls. It's very uncomfortable when you're in bed. Yeah. So you have to have this handy dandy lint remover. And this is like a, it's kind of like an electric shaver, but you don't use it on your face. <laughs> you use it on your clothes. And then it, it kind of cuts off all of those little balls, the little balls of cloth. Then you can remove this and then you empty it in the bin. Okay, there's there's a ball from my last lint removal session. <laughs> is that so, another de is that another device from Germany? No, well, well, no, actually. Now these things have been around for many, many years, but it's never really, seen it before. It's, I know because you could only buy them. My mum bought one years ago, like 30, 40 years ago, and she got it through mail order catalogs you know they were only sold on special like mail catalogs look at this wonderful device and she bought them for me and my sister when we went away to college and i always wanted one and the thing is they break they don't last forever and it's very difficult to find them but i am beginning to find them here now they come into lead a lot at aldi every now and again <laughs> and then i buy another one for the future <laughs> Very interesting. I like that very much. Okay, so those are our 10, top 10 um, things we can't do without. And now we're going to look at 10 more that have been disappointing and really bad and rubbish and useless. So really negative devices. Before we do that, though, we'd like to to invite you to, to come in and join us if you'd like to and speak about your devices or something that you find really useful. So I'm going to put a link in the chat room here. And if you want to, to come in with us, all you need to do is follow that link, put that link in your browser. It works well in Chrome and in Firefox. And then we'll bring you in to, to speak with us. All you need is um, a webcam and a microphone. But if you don't really want us to see you, if you want to hide your 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 webcam that's fine you can turn off your webcam and just have audio so um come in and and say hi say hello and tell us what gadgets you really like it'd be really nice to to speak to you mm -hmm. so let's continue lynn with biggest disappointments disappointments rubbish now, this was problematic for me because I had a big clean out recently and I threw away all these things <laughs> because they're so bad. So some of them we've only got pictures for. Right. <laughs> Here's my latest. Here's my I haven't thrown this away yet. This is my latest rubbish gadget. Right? What is it? This is a tea bag saucer. <laughs> or it's a cooking spoon holder. <laughs> now <laughs> it's really useless it's very useless the idea is i drink a lot of tea because i'm british and i love drinking tea so i have about six or seven cups of tea a day and um, because 
I, I tend to make it's not very it's not very sort of um, elegant, but I tend to make my tea in my cup. So I put my tea bag in my cup. I put boiling water on it, and then I let it brew. And then you have to take the tea bag out. Now, usually when you take it out, you're aiming for the rubbish bin. But on and the it way, drips everywhere, it drips. yeah. Exactly. Drips. See? So so I when I saw this, I thought, this is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have this next to the kettle. And every time I make my tea, I'm going to take my tea bag out and put it in there. And then afterwards, you take this off, you empty it in the bin, and you can put it in the dishwasher. <laughs> wonderful. The problem is I'm too old and I have over 50 years of experience of taking my tea bag out <laughs> and putting it in the bin. So although it's next to the kettle, I ignore it. I just don't see it. And so I continue to drip on the way to the bin. And this has been sitting in my kitchen for the last year and it's never been used. <laughs> so why haven't you thrown it away yet? I don't know. I'm going to throw it away after this program, right? <laughs> after this program, I'm not putting it back in the kitchen. What <laughs> so you could do, there. Lynn, is to change its use and you could mm -hmm. put some incense in the top, liquid incense with a candle underneath. <laughs> and that will have a lovely fragrance no, in your that, office. That, that's another piece of junk. I don't want that. I don't want more junk. No. <laughs> my Eventually. sister, my sister has one of those. She has um, she? Uh -huh. a tea bag saucer that she uses. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. It's just habit, you see, after so many years not doing it like that because it's a silly thing. I mean, it's a very practical idea, but it's just, I just can't get used to it. <laughs> okay. Well, we've got some photo. I think I'll, I'll go out of order because I'll, sh I'll, I'll leave the photographs until last. So, um, one disappointing thing for me, and I don't actually have them to show you, but these aren't the actual ones I'm disappointed with. But just to show you the kind of thing, these small Bluetooth earphones that pair with your mobile phone so you can listen to music and podcasts. I bought um, a cheap pair and... They lasted maybe six months, and then the left one stopped working. Mm -hmm. And there was no guarantee. It, it was something from China. It was very cheap. So I, th I threw them away. But speaking of vocabulary, just to make a, a difference between these small earphones that go in your ear and these bigger headphones that go on your head so the big ones that cover your ear are called headphones and these smaller ones that go in your ear are called earphones so i was disappointed recently with earphones that i bought and they just stopped working mm. and sometimes with bluetooth ear headsets earphones or or headset sometimes they ha they they can get interference i notice that if my microwave is on in the kitchen then I get a lot of interference in them. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you can hear the taxi drivers calling from the radio outside. I, I, not yet, not yet. I haven't had the taxi drivers, but there are there is interference, you know. And I live in a flat, and if somebody else, my neighbour, has the microwave on, and I'm close to the wall, then it also causes uh, interference. But I actually don't like um, earphones. I prefer headset. I don't like the feeling of that thing in my ear. The, mm -hmm. the earbud is called, isn't it? Sometimes. Uh -huh. What's your okay. What's your first second disappointing thing? Second, but you, do you want the picture ones, or do you want? Can we Can we save the pictures till last, so it'll be easier okay. to share the screen with all the pictures together? Look at this. This is semi-automatic. If I just remember how to work it, watch. Wow, <laughs> what is it? So this is supposed to, it's a little light. Unfortunately, I've had it a long time sitting in my drawer because I don't use it and the battery is gone. But this is a little halogen lamp. And what you're supposed to do is in your book, you stick it in here and then you can read if you haven't got any light. Right. And right. At first I thought, this is wonderful. I can read in the car when my husband's driving. 
you know when it's dark and you read in the car but uh -huh. you can't have the light on in the car it's against the law so i thought this would be wonderful but in actual fact whenever i need it i haven't got it it's in the drawer at home <laughs> <laughs> and then i thought what a piece of rubbish so this is also going in the bin i can use this once to put this in so that it goes in the bin together so you're throwing both of those away I'm they're throwing rubbish both of them away yeah okay both of them away to remind you if you want to come in and say hello this is the link you need to join us on facebook so come and jump in say hello and tell us about your your favorite gadgets or disappointing gadgets one that's been quite disappointing for me and it took me a long time to actually buy this device it's an electric shaver because ah. all of my life I've shaved with shaving foam and a razor, a wet shave, as mm -hmm. we say, a wet shave. And, and I thought, well, I'll try, I'll try buying a shaver because the blades are so expensive. Yeah. I mean, blades now to buy for a, a wet shave are something like 11, 12 euros for five. Mm -hmm. And that's really expensive. So I thought, well, if I use this, but it doesn't give the same kind of shave. It doesn't shave you close enough. And especially in the summer when I'm always like sweaty, that's why I use the fan. It, it, I don't like do, uh, shaving. I much prefer a wet shave, especially in the summer. So I do use this, but not every day. I thought I would use it regularly. And I've been quite disappointed because mm -hmm. it's not as effective as I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. Does your husband use a, a wet shave or an electric shave. razor? He hates, he hates electric shavers. For the same, the same reason, yeah? Yeah, and I know that the, the razors cost, the, the blades cost a lot of money because I'm usually the one shopping for <laughs> Buying them, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, my dad was the same. My dad hated an electric shaver. My dad too. He, but when he got older, it was, he he had more problems. I think when when your skin is older, he cut himself quite a lot with a, a, a normal razor. So mm -hmm. in the latter years of his life, he used an electric shaver because it was safer so that he didn't, he didn't nick himself or prick himself. Uh -huh. and, there's, and there's another thing, because I'm getting older and my skin's a bit looser now, it doesn't really <laughs> shave, it doesn't, it doesn't shave my, any of my, any of my chins. It doesn't shave any of my chins. I've got so many, but it doesn't shave the neck. So, I shave, I can shave my face and then there's all hair around here that I have to shave with the, with the razor anyway. I wish Rubbish. I, I wish Useless. I could sympathize with you, but unfortunately I don't shave. <laughs> what, Thank what's, God. Your, what's your, what's your next one, Lynn? Okay. All right. Well, um, Oh, before, before your, um, before your I, next one, Antonio thinks that your clip on book light is the gadget he likes the most. So oh, wow. it's a pity you didn't live in Spain, Antonio. Otherwise I would give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> before I throw it away. <laughs> yeah. To be able to read in bed while your partner's sleeping. That's true. Ava's just said that, but mm. you see the problem is Ava is it's quite bulky. And when you, you have to keep clipping it every time you change the page. So <laughs> I, think I, I, I think I would probably wake my husband up with all the rustling, you know? <laughs> so, um, so have no, you I, ever, do you have an ebook reader? No, that's a I useful, don't. that's a handy gadget. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. No, I me mentioned that to your husband when it's your birthday coming up. You might get one. Yeah. No, I don't want any more rubbish. No, no gadgets. No, no more gadgets. <laughs> Right, here's a, here's a very old-fashioned one. Do you know what those are? What are they, Craig? Bookmarks. bookmarks. Uh -huh. I don't know about you, but people always give me bookmarks. I get bookmarks all the time. Alejandra's saying bookmarkers, but not bookmarkers, bookmarks, yeah? A marker is actually... Um, a marker pen yeah so don't say er on the end don't say marker you say bookmark yeah bookmark and um people give me bookmarks and they are pretty you know but again it's because i'm very lazy 
just like with the tea bags. So this is me. I'm in bed with my book. If it's a nice book, it might have this, which is great. That's my bookmark, <laughs> right? And when it hasn't got that, I just turn the pages at the top. Oh, but that ruins the book, though, Lynn. That ruins the book. You can't turn the pages. You're a purist, aren't you? You see, I'm not. I'm a philistine. And when you do turn, when you do turn the corner of the book, it's got a lovely name. It's dog ear. It's a so if you have a book that's full of those um, folds at the top of the page, it's dog eared. It's a dog eared book. It's well all used. Of my, all of my books are dog eared. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what gives a book personality you see and i use with the sorry book I, I never have them yeah i, I use post-it notes as bookmarks because you can also write notes on them if you see something interesting uh -huh. and then when you close the book you just pass it to the, stick it to the next page and it doesn't damage the book yeah yeah uh -huh. post-it oh, notes uh -huh. i think Al alejandro no Alejandra says no. So um Yeah, I'm I agree with Alejandra. You can't yeah. is that a response to me turning the the pages on the books. Pemba said I really like bookmarks. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, what about you? Have you got another one? I have got another one to show you. I think this is the last one physically I have to show you. And it's um again connected to the computer and it's this have you any idea what this is used for again usb connector little that brush looks, on there that looks like it's an electric razor for the computer or something not exactly yeah. i'm not sure if i can turn it on i don't need to turn it on so this is a keyboard vacuum so when you if you get a keyboard that's full of biscuits and crisps and pieces of sandwich then you you brush that you you connect it to the usb and as like a proper vacuum cleaner you've even got a attachment that you can vacuum off the crumbs and the dirt from your keyboard the problem is who gave you that did you actually, buy that for no, yourself? actually it belongs to my wife oh. my <laughs> wife got this somewhere so she she but the problem is and i have tried it it's too weak oh. it doesn't mm. have enough vacuum power it doesn't suck enough so mm. it doesn't really clean the, the the keyboard so what i prefer to use to clean the keyboard is just this compressed air that you just do this and that gets away the dust and the crumbs and the biscuits from the keyboard. You but this what? is completely useless. It's a useless <laughs> gadget because it's not strong enough to vacuum the, the dirt from the keyboard. Do you know what you can do as well, Craig? Shaky, shaky. Yeah, but, does, but sometimes <laughs> those pieces of sandwiches and the ham get stuck under. You can't get, you can't get you it. You not eat at work. It's not good for you. I don't eat at the computer. Okay. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. What's your next one? Um, well, I think I need the picture for this one. And okay. this one is truly, truly useless. It's the biggest piece or the littlest piece because it's not big. It's the smallest piece of junk, right? I could use a stronger word, um, but I won't. <laughs> but it's, it's a useless gadget, and I, I, I have received this because for some reason people like to give it to me as a present. Can I stop and you I for a so can I stop you for a second, Lynn? Because yeah. uh, Alejandra wants to come in and say hi, so maybe we can go oh, back yes, to that uh -huh, after yeah. after a while. Let's bring in Alejandra. Hi, Alejandra. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Fine. Where are you speaking from? <laughs> from Cadiz. From Cadiz. Mm -hmm. Is it hot down there? Um, not now, but during the whole day, yes, it was. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so have you got a favorite gadget or device, Alejandra? Yes, and I took it directly from my kitchen to here. Probably it's very common, uh -huh. but it wasn't that common 
here in Spain like a few years ago, I think. So maybe you can give me your ideas. Okay, I'm curious already. Ah, it's a kettle. It's a kettle. <laughs> it's a kettle. Or a water boiler or something like that. No, a kettle. Kettle. A kettle. kettle. Uh -huh. An electric kettle. Electric. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that is a godsend, Alejandra. I but, can't live. When yeah. I go on holiday, I take my kettle with me. Do you? <laughs> yes, I do. In a suitcase? Oh, yeah, no, for my tea, yeah. to make my tea. Well, in the car, if we go to an apartment in Spain, we always take the kettle with us so that I can make my cups of tea. <laughs> so, Alejandra, are you more a tea drinker than a coffee drinker? Because many Spanish people prefer to drink coffee. That, that's why I took this, because we didn't used to have this in the past, because we are not tea drinkers. Yes. Mm -hmm. We prefer coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we use it for everything. Now, I mean, you couldn't find it in the stores in the past. Mm -hmm. And once you got one, you saw it was cheap. You get one, and then you boil water for everything. For tea, yeah. for coffee, for pasta, for whatever you need. Mm -hmm. And so, what would be the name in Spanish for that? How would you call it in Spanish? Mm, calient, no sé. Calientador de agua. No, I think they call it, don't they say hervidor de agua? Hervidor, un hervidor. 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 Uh -huh. hervidor. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, okay. no, I agree with you, Alejandra. It's a must-have, a must-have. I realized mm -hmm. that in the last couple of years yeah mm -hmm. so, I use so, every day, so you're um, already you're already very british <laughs> yeah but <laughs> i drink um japanese tea oh <laughs> so I prefer japanese tea. Mm -hmm. green but tea green tea mm -hmm. nice. that's mm. right too uh -huh. great okay well thank you do you want to share any other gadgets or was it just the just one gadget no, it's just to tell you that I just landed here. I've known you uh, in the past as a mansión del inglés and so on, but I've never seen your videos. And just by chance, I was mm -hmm. on Facebook, I found you, and it was something quick like, okay, I want to participate, like really quick. Well, <laughs> thank you very much. It's lovely talking to you. Thanks for coming okay. in and joining us. Yeah, and I love hearing you, and I learn a lot. Um, thank you very much to you. You're welcome. And we hopefully we'll be doing this regularly now every every week, so hope to see you again next time. Yeah, I'm sure of that. <laughs> okay, I'm All going right. to remove you if anybody else wants to come in and share it, their gadget okay. like Alejandra. So thanks, Alejandra. See you Bye. soon. Bye-bye. So, yeah, if you want to join, um, come on in. There's the link up there. And Lynn, I, I interrupted you. You were sharing something that disappointed you. Well, this is the last one because it's a disappointment, a big disappointment. So it's a small thing. And people, for some reason, give it to me as presents. And also, when you go to a wedding, I've been to weddings here, and they've given this gift to the women as a, as a wedding gift. Now, um, you better show the picture because I had three or four and I threw them all away a, f <laughs> a few months ago so I haven't actually got one here to show you okay Can you show the let picture? me let me try and find it just a second um that's it yeah. can you see that so you have to look quite closely is it very small they, they're, they're sort of about this big, like the size of a big coin, yeah? And they look very pretty. They've got jewels in them and diamonds. And then the, around the edge, it, it twists off and you can put it on a bar and it, in it or on a table and it's a little hook. And what you're supposed to do with it is hang your handbag on it in a restaurant <laughs> or a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right? dear. So it's like to hang the, the bag on the table, you know? Why, why can't you put it on the floor? Well, you, the, that, apparently that brings bad luck. Somebody told me that handbags on, on floors bring oh. bad luck. No, but it's not very safe.
But quite frankly, I mean, it's just a piece of junk for me because, you know, I'm a, I'm a busy person. I'm a mum as well. Once you've been a mum, your handbag has got loads of rubbish in it anyway, like clothes, pegs and other things. So the last thing I need is more rubbish. And when I go to a bar, the last thing that's on my mind is to get out a little hook to hang my handbag on. I just say, give me a beer. I want my beer. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know who invented them. And for any friends out there, please don't buy me any more. I don't want one. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to share a picture of something that I first saw years and years and years ago. Back in the 1980s at home, my parents used to do roast dinners. They cooked roast dinners on a Sunday. And if we had a roast turkey, for example, my dad would stand at the end of the table and with the turkey in front of him, and he would take out something called an electric carving knife. And this is what it looks like. So the carving knife, if you can see this, is, whoops, that's not it, that's it. It's quite big and it has a cable and, it, and sometimes they're battery, but back in the 1980s, it had a big cable. And those two blades moved backwards and forwards really, really quickly. And the idea was to cut or carve, we say C-A-R-V-E, to carve the meat, to carve the turkey. But it didn't work. It shredded the turkey into little tiny pieces and the turkey used to fly all <laughs> over the room and hit you in the face. And my dad couldn't control it. So the knife was doing this and he was dancing with it. And it was a complete disaster. So that was the electric carving knife. Can and I confess something to you? You have one, don't you? You've got one. In I kitchen. have one and I love it. It nearly made my must-have list. <laughs> yes, but when, but when did you buy it? Exactly like that. In the 1980s, it, it, that one oh. was never programmed obsolescence because I still it still works. Your problem with the turkey is that was my it dad has, <laughs> well, possibly as well. But the problem is it has two different types of blades. Well, mine came with two different sets of blades. And one had quite big serrations in it. You know how the, they kind the of up and down the curves. One has big ones and the other set of blades has small ones. And so when you like shred everything and it turns out a mess, it's probably because you've got the wrong blade on the knife. Okay, that's, that's the reason. Okay. But I use it and I usually use it for meat. That's it. Well, I'm pleased it worked. It works for you. It, it never, it never worked for our family. So, uh -huh. what's that phrase, uh, Craig? Because I've got a phrase on the tip of my tongue. What does that what mean? It, one on the, the tip, tip of your of tongue. tongue. It means when you can remember something, but you can't remember all the words. So there's a there's a saying in English, and I can't remember it all. I only got the last bit of it. One man's something is another man's poison. Do you know that one? Um, no. It's familiar, but I can't remember exactly yeah. what the phrase is. I'll have to find it next week, and then we can tell people uh, later, or you can put it up with the notes of the thing. What it Googling means it now. Phrase is that you obviously hate the electric carving knife, but I love it. And for you... The electric carving knife is poison. And for me, I just can't remember the, the, <laughs> the word. I've got it. I've got it. I've one got man, it. yes, one man's meat, which is very, very meat. apt, very appropriate. It's one man's meat is another man's poison. There you are. That's it. Yeah, that's that's the, the expression. It was on the tip of my tongue and I couldn't remember how it started. And that means. For me, the electric carving knife is fantastic, but for you, it's poison. It's veneno. And Alejandra says one man's trash is another man's treasure. That's, oh, yeah, okay. very good. Yeah. 
Never heard that one before, but that was nice. Uh, and ever said, what about the device to keep the knife afilado, which is sharpened? Sharp is afilado. And mm -hmm. sh to sharpen something is the verb to make it sharp. Uh -huh. What do you do to sharpen it, Lynn? A knife sharpener. There's a little there's a little device. I've got it in my kitchen as well. A knife sharpener. A knife sharpener. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Antonio's <laughs> leaving us. Yeah, because we've yeah. gone over the hour. So thanks yeah. for thanks for being with us, Antonio. See you again soon. Yeah, bye bye, Antonio. Thank you. Should we do what do you think? Should we do one more Lynn and then call it a day? I think so. Uh, or maybe, yeah. I mean, I, my last one is a silly one as well. What is it? So mine is a torch, but it's not, of course, a torch is a very, very useful device. Yeah. The torch that I hate is this one. And if you can bring up the, oh. no. Yeah, uh, it's, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's a wind up torch. Uh, no, I don't See think it? I have it actually. Oh, you did show me it earlier. Did yeah, I? a wind up torch. And basically, it's a torch which usually is a battery, has a battery in it, and it gives you light. And then a few years ago, they invented a torch. There it is. And that little handle, you wind it up. It's a dynamo. And then you don't need a battery and you have the torch. And I go camping a lot. And I thought, this is a wonderful invention. <laughs> <laughs> until I had one and I got up uh, in the camp where I go to if you want to get up to in the evening to in the night in the middle of the night to go to the toilets you have quite a long walk in a very very dark field and I would get up in the night and I would put my torch on to find my way through the field to the toilets and the thing just didn't last so you were having to wind it up all the time to get a little bit of light. And all the other people on the campsite could only hear the noise of <laughs> and it woke everybody up. So they didn't like me with the wind up torch. <laughs> and Do you know I don't like the wind up torch now. I mean, we have batteries, so why don't we use batteries <laughs> when we can? Yeah. Craig, I think I've lost you. <laughs> so there you are. I obviously um, killed Craig with my wind-up torch story. Right. Now, I see a few people having to go night-night to you too. And I know that the people who are in South America, it's lunchtime, so many of you are maybe going back to work again. Um, so oh, Alejandra says you could do biceps. Yes, it would probably be very good for me to do that with the uh, wind up torch. It would be good for my muscles. Here's Craig again. I don't know what. Thank you. I don't know what happened. But I just <laughs> it was the wind up torch. It just shocked <laughs> you so much that you disappeared. <laughs> do you know you can always get wind up? You can also get wind up radios as yes, well. I've, heard, I've yeah. seen those. Yeah. No, I yeah. mean they sound. They are. They are clever ideas for places countries that don't have access to batteries or to electricity i mean it's very useful but i think here if you're going to a campsite in europe for example it's a bit of a gadget it's a bit useless isn't it really yeah yeah you know? a bit of it's a, gadget. a bit of a gadget yeah it's a clever device but it's a gadget I think we'll okay. we'll we'll over time, so I think we'll yeah. leave it there. Um, it's been it's been a lot of fun. Thank you ever so much for watching. Just to remind you before we go that I'm Craig from MansionEngles.com. If you want to go and use our free material and courses over there, you're very welcome. And also listen to our podcast every Sunday. Uh, funny enough, last Sunday we spoke about game changer and game changing oh, things, uh -huh. so it was quite. That's quite interesting. You mentioned it. And mm. Lynn, what, what can people find on your website? Put it like this dot com. OK, well, I'm an online teacher and I work for myself and my company is called Put It Like This. And I try to help people to express themselves the way they really want to express themselves, to help them express their own personalities 
in the second language, which is difficult, you know, you have your own personality in your native language. And when you often are using a second language, sometimes it's hard to get your own personality across. And so that's really my objective. But I do all sorts of courses if you want to learn how to express yourself better in writing or in speaking. And I also do phonology courses and courses for teachers who teach in English, even though it's not their own language. Okay. So go and check out Lynn's website um, and hopefully we'll be back again very soon. So keep watching yeah. Facebook, keep watching Twitter, and we'll mm -hmm. let you know next time we we come on and and speak to you. So um, we'll say goodbye. Have a good yeah, we'll say evening. Goodbye. And thanks very much to Alejandra, who was so brave to come on and speak. That was wonderful, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, thank you, Alejandra. And next time as well, we hope we'll, more of you will come in and practice your English and speak with yeah. us. So we'll see okay. you soon. Stay safe. Right. Be careful out there. And mm -hmm. um, thanks for joining. All right, then. Bye. <laughs>